Trees, were you once arrows fallen from blue? What terrible warriors cast you down? The stars? Your music springs from the soul of birds, from the eyes of God, from perfect passion. Trees, will your tough roots know my heart in the soil? I'm here in Woodford County, slowly gathering acorns for a project called 800 Acorns. This is a one day art installation meets ecological restoration event where artists, writers, Kentuckians will gather to plant 800 acorns in the Daniel Boone National Forest as a celebration of the octocentennial of the Charter of the Forests. The Charter of the Forest was part of the Magna Carta and it was signed by Henry III in 1217 and basically what it did was it gave commoners a right to the royal forest which they didn't have before. So they could go into the forest and gather firewood and they could hunt and they could forage and basically survive. And now legal scholars look back at the Charter of the Forest as really the first piece of western uh, conservation legislation that paved the way for things like the national parks. We will be gathering in a national forest on a plot of land that has been strip mined, that's been degraded by human arrogance, and we will be reseeding that land with these 800 oaks. And to watch the seedlings grow and to watch them become oak trees and to eventually sit in the shade of those trees and to read the poems that are posted along the trail, it'll give people a sense of renewal. The land that has been so degraded can actually be a land of inspiration. This is the way that autumn came to the trees. It stripped them down to the skin, left their ebony bodies naked. It shook out their hearts. The yellow leaves scattered them over the ground. Anyone could trample them out of shape, undisturbed by a single moan of protest. The birds that herald dreams were exiled from their song each voice torn out of its throat. They dropped into the dust even before the hunter strung his bow. O oh God of May, have mercy. Bless these withered bodies with the passion of your resurrection. Make their dead veins flow with blood again. Give some tree the gift of green again. Let one bird sing. The original topsoil from this site is gone. When they mined it, you push it over the edge and it's now below us probably 100 feet or something like that. And this material that was left is just overburdened, the stuff that's over top of the coal. It actually has some pretty good fertility so what we'll need to do, <clears throat> we have this big iron bar, and you'll want to kind of create a hole with it. And uh, I'll take a handful of potting soil and put it down in your hole. And it only needs to be, you know, a couple of inches deep, just enough to bury the thing. And then take your acorn, put it on its side in the hole, Add a little bit of the uh, um, potting material over it. And then what we want to do with these shelters is put them over the actual acorn so that it's in the middle. And we want to stack some of the soil around it so that rodents can't get in. It'll deter them from getting in there. So you stick it down over the top of your acorn. Push this little bamboo pole in and then just work the soil around it. And there you go, there's one of 800, done. I'm going home. <laughs>
that's the button I was looking for right there. Yeah. Right oh, that's the, yeah. Yeah. In the mating of trees, the pollen grain entering invisible the domed room of the winds survives the ghost of the old forest that stood here when we came. The ground invites it and it will not be gone. I become the familiar of that ghost and its ally, carrying in a bucket 20 trees smaller than weeds, and I plant them along the way of the departure of the ancient host. I return to the ground its original music. It will rise out of the horizon of the grass and over the heads of the weeds and it will rise over the horizon of men's heads. As I age in the world, it will rise and spread and be for this place horizon and orison, the voice of its winds. I have made myself a dream to dream of its rising that has gentled my nights. Let me desire and wish well the life these trees may live when I no longer rise in the mornings to be pleased by the green of them shining and their shadows on the ground and the sound of the wind in them. I found some more in here and then some lady came by and gave us some. On the last day of the world, I would want to plant a tree. What for? Not the fruit. The tree that bears the fruit is not the one that was planted. I want the tree that stands in the earth for the first time. When the sun already going down in the water, touching its roots in the earth, full of the dead and the clouds passing one by one over its leaves. Oh look, Jerry's got us another hole ready. Now my co-mates and brothers in exile, hath not old custom made this life more sweet than that of painted pop? Are not these woods more free from peril than the envious court? Here we feel but the penalty of Adam, the season's difference as the icy fang and churlish chiding of the winter's wind, which when it bites and blows upon my body, even till I shrink with cold, I smile and say, this is no flattery, these are counsellors. But feelingly persuade me what I am. Sweet are the uses of adversity, which, like the toad, ugly and venomous, wears yet a precious jewel in his head. And this our life exempt from public haunt, finds tongues in trees, books in the running brooks, sermons in stones, and good in everything. I would not change it. So this one was like kind of in a weird spot. I literally did feel like I was in a movie. I was born humble. At the foot of mountains, my face was set upon the immensity of earth and stone, and upon oaks full-bodied and old. There is so much red upon the parchment of leaves, and so much of beauty blown upon the winds. I can but fold my hands and sink my knees in the leaf pages. Under the mute trees I have cried with this scattering of knowledge, beneath the flight of birds shaken with this waste of wings. I was born humble. My heart grieves beneath this wealth of wisdom, perished with the leaves. A well-kempt forest begs Our Lady's grace. Someone is not disgusted, or at least is laying bets upon the human race, retaining enough decency to last. The trees encountered on a country stroll reveal a lot about a country's soul. A small grove massacred to the last ash, an oak with heart rot, give away the show. This great society 
is going to smash. They cannot fool us with how fast they go, how much they cost each other and the gods. A culture is no better than its woods.